happy to be here. I don't feel well. I'll let you know that right now. I, um, here's what happened. I live in Chicago, and a couple of days ago, I was downtown there, and for the first time in my life, I ate out of a food truck. They have them lined up. I don't know if you have ever eaten out of a truck. Uh, it's not all that fun. Uh, they got weird names on the side, so you're not really sure kind of what type of food you're ordering. I, I just picked a truck and went with it. It said streets and sanitation on the side. It was awful. I like my city. I live in a neighborhood in Chicago, and they have this going on. Like in my neighborhood, if I have garbage and it's made of metal, I take it to the curb and put it there, and within three minutes, someone comes and picks it up. I don't know who they are, where they're coming from. They're there. Gotta be careful though, I once went out there and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? They're like, we're taking the metal. I'm like, no, that's my car. Uh, that doesn't count in this little game. That's not true. Uh, Cause I don't drive a car, I drive a minivan. Thank you, thank you. Got some mini van drivers out there. You tell someone you bought a minivan, they usually react like you tell them you lost your job. They're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, but uh, <laughs> life is unfair. <laughs> They're not bad though, right? You like yours? I like my minivan. You just gotta get it with some of the extras. I got mine with the word loser already detailed into the side <laughs> panel. No one's guessing what's going on when they pass me by. It's funny how what you drive becomes your personality. I have a friend, he rides a Harley. Any Harley people out there? Yeah, there he is. He tells me about his weekends. He goes out with other Harley people, meets up with them. He doesn't have to know them, and they have, what does he call them, rallies? There's something you're never going to see, a minivan rally? Uh, what would this be? Just a bunch of white guys beating up, driving very cautiously over to Sam's Club to buy diapers, go back home. I like driving and I like listening to music while I drive. I listen to that app on my phone called Pandora. Yeah, yeah. Pandora fans. Uh, there's two types of Pandora. I don't know if you knew that. There's a free one and then there's a $5 a month no commercial Pandora. I have the free one. Uh, commercial once came out and the guy said this. He goes, there's never been a better time to buy a Mercedes Benz. Better time? I don't even have the $5 a month for Pandora. What makes you think I'm buying a Mercedes? Think, Pandora. I bought it, of course, because I have kids, you know. You know, when your kids are little, anyone got little kids out there? Yeah. You got more than one sort of little kid. You can't even drive them like to restaurants, like real restaurants, nice ones don't want anything to do with you. There's like three restaurants in my town that'll have me. It's like Fridays, Ruby Tuesdays, Acid Reflux Wednesdays. Uh, <laughs> seriously, you've been to these family restaurants? You trust the food there? Ever order up like that appetizer that's basically a giant onion bush that they deep fried somewhere? <laughs> Can this be healthy for you? Which brick of the food pyramid accounts for eight pounds of onion fried at animal fat? Uh, they throw old ones out back, raccoons are coming up. They're like, no, I'm not eating that man. Uh, a raccoon, I'm not crazy. My kids are in my teen, in their teens now. Kind of miss when they were little. I have um, two girls and a boy. I like little girls when they're like five, six years old, just you dress them up, they look like miniature human beings, right? But if you've got like a five, six-year-old boy at home, these guys don't resemble humans at all, right? They're... When my son was that age, I just couldn't figure out what he was doing ever. Once he was just like rolling around in dirt or something, and I had this thought in my head, I'm like, you know, if I had a big enough balloon, I would put him inside it and fly him away. That's like, because I got the idea, it was on the news once, they thought a guy did that. It turned out the kid was, remember that story? The kid wasn't in the balloon, but CNN didn't know that. And they're reporting, they're like, how could a man do something like that to his only son? I'm like, I know. 
Because he's five. You can't do anything else with him. <laughs> Have CNN watch him for a while. I'll take a nap. <laughs> so that age, I remember he was like kindergarten, first grade. Here's the thing I could never understand when he went to school. Like, who gives a five-year-old boy homework? Yeah. He comes home with homework. You know, teachers know what's happening here. It's me sitting down with him. We get like 20 seconds in and I'm like, just go to bed, I'll do it, you know? Um, so the trick is I'm right-handed, I would just switch the pen and write it left-handed. Looks like a kid wrote it. And uh, we did that for years. Uh, almost made the honor roll once. Uh, Turns out I'm not very smart. Uh, no, you know what always uh, tripped us up on the grade was the, uh, the diorama project. Oh. Ever have to work on a diorama? You know what that is? It's like a shoebox with some historical event happening inside that you made. <laughs> we had to do one on Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg. You think my son learned anything about that? Just because I emptied out an old Nike box and glued some action figures to the bottom. We didn't have Civil War guys in our diorama. We had Chewbacca leading the Confederates, uh, the little mailman from the play school village on his flank. Uh, turned it in, he got a B. I don't know what it takes to fail at his school, but that was B-level work. Maybe a shoebox with the original pair of shoes still in it or something. So, uh, yeah, I'm married, happily married. I've been married 22 years now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, certainly uh, we, we have arguments, right? We had a, you know, fight a lot. I had a big fight before I came into Utah yesterday. Uh, can't remember what it was about. I wasn't paying attention. But uh, <laughs> mad about something. But, uh, no, you know, here's the thing. You're in a relationship. You're married or dating, you're gonna argue. That's part of a relationship. Here's the thing. I wish I knew which side of the argument I'm on. Can I know this much, right? This happened to me and my wife came into a room once. I'm watching TV. She's like, yeah, Bill, how come there's three things of milk in the refrigerator? I didn't know whether that meant that's not enough or too many, you know? I'm like, I'll run out and get more. Or drink two gallons right here in the kitchen. I just want this conversation to be over. Uh, it was whatever it takes to make that happen. I shouldn't complain about my wife. Look at me. You know, I'm lucky to even be married. You know, Some guys say they're like God's gift to women. I'm like God's re-gift to women. That's what I think is the best thing I got going for me. I don't understand women. Most guys don't understand women. Because you just say things that make no sense to us sometimes. Like, just a few weeks ago, before Valentine's Day, like, a week before, my wife says to me, she goes, you know what, you've been working really hard, Bill, um, this year. Uh, just don't bother getting me anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, tried that 12 years in a row. Never really worked. <laughs> but I could tell she was trying to be nice, you know? So I, I, I'm like, thank you. That's a nice gesture. But secretly, she didn't know. I had this whole plan going. I had like $500 set aside, and I was going to buy this really surprise gift. That's why I got up early on a Saturday. She was still asleep, and I got to the dollar store before it even opened and just went nuts. 500 individual items is what she got. You guys go to the dollar store? It's a weird place, so... Next time you're there, think about this. Like, everything for sale there, everything is one very small step away from just being thrown out. Uh, <laughs> this is the last stop on the retail chain for all of this stuff. There is nowhere else for it to go. I mean, it's a crazy place. It's all in aisles. There's a cosmetics aisle. <laughs> Have you been down that? There's, you can buy a bottle of men's cologne for $1 a bottle. 
I don't know who you're dating here in Provo, guys, but uh, these women are cool with the smell of dollar cologne. They're probably cool with just the B.O. smell. And uh, skip it, skip it, skip it. It is good for little kids to shop there, right? Get them a little toy or something. Probably the best thing ever for sale in any store is in the dollar store, usually in the toy aisle. Um, if you see this, it's, it's basically a brown bag. A blank brown bag with question marks all over it. They call it the mystery grab bag item for one dollar. <laughs> Apparently there's crap in this bag so bad. <laughs> when people could see it on the shelf, they didn't want to pay one dollar for it. Was it piling up in the back? Some sort of emergency meeting on a Monday? We gotta move this stuff somehow, fellas. Some ideas. I don't know, put it in a brown bag. We'll make a little game out of it. I had $500. So I bought that thing. Took it home, opened it up. Bottle of men's cologne. In the I was talking about, and I was, you know, my kids are growing up. I was thinking about my childhood, like as a little boy, the things that you have to do. I was in the Cub Scouts. I was thinking about this the other day because it's kind of disturbing still. They used to have this thing in the Cub Scouts called the Pinewood Derby. What's that all about? I'm seven years old. You want me to carve a block of pine, the most dense wood on the planet, into a car that runs? I can't even use a fork at that age. You're trying to get me to use a... Plus, this thing isn't about kids making cars, right? No, it's about whose dad has the best set of tools at home. Which was bad for me, because my dad, uh, God bless him, he, he has no tool. Never had any. The, the most sophisticated technical instrument he's ever owned is that big plastic clip that you close your potato chips with. That's all he can... No, so I was really on my own for this project. I, I remember finding just like a knife in the kitchen drawer, kind of carving this thing, and looked like a minivan when I got done with it. It was, uh, I didn't win, but I got the safety awards that they were handing out. You've been in that contest, it's weird, because there's always that one kid whose dad is like an engineer at NASA or something, you know? We're supposed to believe his son had no help in the construction of his little car when halfway down the track, two liquid nitrogen boosters shoot off either side, setting my minivan on fire as it careens into the bushes. I'm glad you guys are happy uh, weekend. You know, weekends are great. So I'm glad you're out here. Uh, work is so hard, right? You know, I've had bad jobs in my life. I was in the military. Uh, well, I was in the Navy. Well, I was in the old Navy. Um, <laughs> cargo shorts division. Uh. <laughs> Don't you ever feel like you're... you're getting jobs in life. You may have a job, but you're also getting other jobs. Things you're not even applying for. Like ever do the self-checkout at the supermarket? Why am I in that industry? How did I get into this? I walked into Smith's today to buy some snacks. Next thing I know, I'm in charge of all the equipment in the whole store, you know? Like, step up there, start scanning your items, bagging, you know? I was doing that, I accidentally overcharged myself for something. Had to go find my manager in the back. Uh, she was not in a good mood. She comes out, she's like, Bill, look, this happens again. We're just gonna have to let you go. I, I don't really even work here. I, uh, I mean, I blame them, right? But I notice all of us are now taking on jobs that we probably shouldn't. You know, we've all got that friend who's like, yeah, I just don't even bother going to the doctor anymore, man. Just get on WebMD, diagnose myself, go get the drugs. I'm always like, well, that is a terrific idea. You've cut out that middleman. 
and his Harvard education, uh, many years of practical, hands-on experience. Now just using your Googling skills to treat your gonorrhea or whatever it is that you have. <laughs> trying to stay healthy. I joined a new health club at the new year. Everyone does that at the beginning of the year. Yeah. yeah. I joined one. It's $25 a month. So I was like, the one I belonged to last year was $50 a month. So I did some quick math. <laughs> so that's half as much per non-visit I'm now not making to either of these places, right? Here's a trick I learned, like if you want to give yourself a good feeling about being healthy, think of bad habits other people have that you don't have and just sort of count that in your column. Like, like I don't smoke, so that's good for my lungs, you know. I have friends who still smoke and it's tough on them. They try to quit and it's hard. Uh, I've seen a lot of them try to do that. I, I was thinking if I was trying to quit smoking, I wouldn't be one of these people transitioning through with the electronic cigarette. You ever seen that? It's like $75. Suddenly you're taking a drag off the flash drive from your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally like smoking, isn't it? Because uh, I'll say this for guys, anyway, who smoke. Some of them look pretty cool, right? You know, you stamp out the butt. Or, I was once at a party. It was so impressive. This guy was in a fight with, like, five other guys, and he simply flicked his burning cigarette at them, and they just jumped back. You can't do that with an e-cigarette. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm out of here. You know, and then walk away. It's like, that thing was 75 bucks. I got to go back now. <laughs> I don't know. Happy to be here. It's nice to be out of the house. Nice to be somewhere. It's hard when you have kids. It's hard to, it's hard to sort of reclaim your life. Like, uh, you know, when I was single, it's like you don't even have to have a plan. You just leave. You know, I, I can't even get out of my house without, you know, some just airtight excuse. It's like, where are you going, Bill? Uh, I got stamp club tonight, remember? <laughs> uh, I'm head of the stamp club and we're meeting and... Uh, it's just depressing, right? I mean, I, I don't even know, like, if people ask me, what are your hobbies? I'm like, uh, yard work, I guess. Uh, <laughs> to cut the grass. Rake leaves. I had so many leaves last fall, I, I broke down and bought a leaf blower. We've really grown lazy with this thing, haven't we? You know? Used to be using a stick with a rake on the end. Now we've got this engine off a 747 <laughs> with a shoulder strap on it, uh, blowing these leaves into kingdom come. We've, I was using mine, I pointed it at the sky to see what would happen. I blew a cold front right out of the neighborhood. Just cleared up like that. I was a hero for a day in my town. No, you do have to be careful with that thing. I was using it, I remember, with my son. He was running around when he was real little. And he ran in front of it. Like, I mean, just for a split second. And, and you know, later, when we were leaving the emergency room, The doctor, he's fine. The doctor just said as he grows older, he'll never grow hair on his body. That's how powerful this thing is, so. No, it's just, you know, life is just sort of change, you know, as you have kids grow up. I just feel like I live kind of a boring life, you know. My wife doesn't even know what to buy me for big holidays. Last Christmas, she bought me, uh, it was a big box under the tree, and I get down there and rip it open, and she bought me a, uh, a paper shredder. <laughs> I had the same reaction you just did. Uh, and I'm like, why did you get me this paper shredder? She goes, well, it's to shred all your important documents. I'm like, you know what I do, right? Uh, she goes, well, I'm worried about identity theft. That made more sense because, you know, I'm working hard. Last thing I need is somebody horning in on this sweet gig I got going over here. <laughs> Tell you, somebody steals my identity, they're in for a big surprise on that first day. 
guy doesn't do anything. <laughs> He's just riding around in a minivan all day. <laughs> no, here's how boring things have, have gotten for me at times. Like, um, things get so boring that, that my dreams aren't even interesting. And I'm not talking about things that I aspire to do, like those kind of dreams. I'm like, when I'm asleep and I dream, it's like boring. <laughs> like here's a dream I had recently. I was, I was uh, on a date for some reason um, with Salma Hayek, the actress. Yeah, and that seems like a pretty good dream. You know, we're out having dinner. It's nice, beautiful actress. She looks at me across the table and she's like, Bill, how come there's three things of milk in the refrigerator? <laughs> That's my time, everybody. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you.